Hi everyone, this is Anne Emery. This is an Excel tutorial for evaluators. This video is about top and bottom rules, and it's the second one about top and bottom rules. These are features within conditional formatting, and these are ex exploration features that you would use when you're just getting started. You haven't really analyzed the data yet. You just kind of want to see if you notice any preliminary patterns. So here's the data set. It's pre and post test data. I have about 180 youth in this data set. They were rated on their attendance, punctuality, etc., before and after completing a job training program. And I also have their total scores. So in the first video about top and bottom rules, I looked at the bottom half um, in the pretest, these are red, and then the top half for the above average scores are green. I did the same thing for the post test, and I noticed some patterns. I noticed that, you know, in general, my pre and post test scores tended to be correlated somewhat. Um, I don't quite want to say correlated because I haven't calculated the R value yet, but I just wanted to do a quickie look at it. So let's look at these in a little bit more depth. I'm going to clear out the conditional formatting. So just click on conditional formatting, clear rules, and say clear rules from the entire sheet. Let's highlight our pretest data here, this array of data, and click on conditional formatting, top and bottom rules. And instead of using the above average and below average features like we did before, let's look at the top and bottom 10%. So bottom 10%, we want these to be red. Okay, where are they? Right there. Okay, those are the bottom 10%. And let's do the top 10% in green. So here are our top 10%. So let's see if these people who tended to be at the tail end of the data, either the very bottom or the very top, are the same people on the pretest and post-test. Top and bottom rules, top 10% is green, and the bottom 10% is red. And notice you don't have to do 10%, I just kind of picked that because it was the default setting. Sometimes I like to use 25%, so look at the bottom quartile and the top quartile of data and see if those people are the same and see if they kind of generally go together. So, some of our people are the same. They happen to score really low on the pretest and really low on the post-test, which, you know, kind of makes sense. Um, and we see some some maybe uh, people who didn't quite follow this pattern in the middle. Then towards the top end of the data, you kind of see the same thing. People who scored in the very top 10% on the pretest also scored in the top 10% on the post-test. Hmm, okay, that kind of makes sense. So now just to check it, let's actually calculate an R value. Let's do a correlation equals coral, C-O-R-R-E-L. You have to pick your two arrays or columns of the data. So the first column that I want is this right here, the pretest? Put in a comma and then select the post test data right here. Close the parentheses, press enter, and what do you get? 0.67. That's a medium to high range for an R value. So, as I suspected, the pre and post test scores are correlated. Um, maybe what I'll do next is look at those on a scatter plot. And I pretty much hope that they are correlated. If they weren't, then probably something fishy is going on in the program. And what this means is that the youth who scored really high at the end of the program are successes in the program you know, they might have done really well because they happen to be higher performing at the beginning. Um, and of course, if you want to learn more, you can also check out AEA365, a great resource for all things evaluation. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed learning about top and bottom rules.